Welcome back to our channel. Very sad news for fans and our childhood famous actor. And for nearly half a century, millions of Mexican households have watched Chabelo together on Sunday mornings. Xavier Lopez Rodriguez, a Mexican actor, performer, and businessman who played the squeaky-voiced, shorts-wearing child figure, passed away on Saturday at the age of 88. Its record-breaking run on television earned his children's game show and Familia con Chabelo, Family Time with Chabelo, a place in the Guinness Book of World Records. The internet exploded with people praising Chabelo's seemingly endless lifespan. Despite the show's cancellation in 2015, memes featuring the character, such as those that put him at the Last Supper or that claim he witnessed the Big Bang, persisted for several more years. There was real love beneath the surface of their witty banter. Many people's formative years were soundtracked by Chabilo's records, movies, and Sunday TV shows. There is not one Mexican individual who doesn't know Chabilo. Laura Martinez, a Mexican journalist working in New York, told the news. On February 17, 1935, Lopes was born in Chicago, Illinois, to parents of Mexican descent. Shortly after, his family relocated back to Leon in central Mexico, where he and his two sisters grew up. In 2020, he declared to the magazine Caras, I've spent my entire childhood in Mexico, and as a result, I feel myself to be 100% Mexican. Because of his dual citizenship, he was drafted into the U.S. Army at the age of 18. Nevertheless, the war ended before he could see any action, and he spent his brief duty at a base in California. After graduating from medical school, he spent many years practicing medicine at a private clinic in Mexico. He began working as an assistant at Televisa, the Mexican television network, while he was still in medical school. As other performers were running late, he was called upon to step in. Once, he was requested to recite an on-air joke about a young man named Chabilo. As Lopez read it aloud to Caras, the voice came out like a child, she explained, and that's where Chabilo was born. Instead of becoming a doctor, he changed careers and went to school for theater. He told the magazine, I'll never forget the look on my father's face when I told him. In the 1950s, his persona was featured in advertisements for Pepsi. After appearing in ads for the company across the Americas, Lopes started his own radio program in Mexico called La Medium Hora de Chabelo, the Chabelo Half Hour. Yet, it was his television show that cemented his place in Mexican popular culture for all time. En Familia with Chabelo debuted in December 1968 and aired live every Sunday morning thereafter. Participants and their families would appear on the show and compete in various games and challenges for prizes, such as traversing the studio floor while carrying a huge water balloon between their knees or climbing greased-up poles. Tens of millions of Mexican kids would gather around the TV to talk to Chabilo. Roberto Carrera Maldonado, a young man from Zacatecas in the 1980s, would get up early on Saturday mornings to see the show. He described it as the best part of my Sunday morning. My sister and I would watch TV together, but we had to keep the sound down so as not to wake up our parents. He claimed that parents would put their kids in front of the TV so that they could get some extra shut-eye. I felt terrible envy for the kids who got to go on the show. How to climb on that thing has always intrigued me. In the late 70s, Ms. Martinez was a fan who attended one of his performances. To watch a live broadcast from the studio in Mexico City, she recalls her grandmother waking her up at 6 o'clock. She said, I will never forgive her for that. I recall feeling let down because I thought it would be just like what I saw on TV. Chabilo up close and personal, complete with clowns and attractive hostesses in short skirts. Yet everything was so dim and far in the studio, and the show was so long. La Catafixia was a unique feature at the end of the show. Winners of Chabelo's game show might choose to gamble their spoils on the prizes behind one of three numbered doors. The audience would be able to see all of the alternatives, which might be anything from candy and toys to a car or white goods and electronics. 
The show helped make household names out of several of the firms who donated prizes, notably Mubbles Troncoso, a local furniture manufacturer. Due to the element of chance involved in the program, a word in Mexican language has emerged to describe a lottery or a high-stakes bet. The phrase, I'm not going to catafixia my dreams for whatever, is a common one in Mexico, and its use signifies exactly what I just described. People do use it, Ms. Martinez affirmed. I have no idea if that's a word. Lopez's cinematic career skyrocketed alongside the success of the show. Mr. Carrera recalls him fighting mummies, vampires, monsters of the lake, in Saturday afternoon movies. I don't know how many, but I'm sure that Chabilo worked on them. A number of them, for sure, he admitted. The strangest part is that he's not Chabilo. Because Chabelo was all I ever saw growing up. Never did run into Xavier. His performance was flawless. A few interviews I caught afterwards left me thinking. That's crazy. Why does he sound different? For 47 years, beginning in December 1968, and Familia Con Chabilo aired practically every week. It was only interrupted by major events like the 2009 swine flu pandemic, Pope Benedict XVI's visit to the country in 2012, and Lopez's illness. His six-decade run as Chabelo earned him a Guinness World Record, and he also set a record for the longest tenure as a children's television personality. Despite the show's cancellation in 2015, references to Chabelo continued to pop up in meme form every Sunday for years afterward. Lopes, who continued to act on occasion far into old age, he even voiced a minor character in the Spanish dub of Pixar's Coco, was never insulted by his level of fame online. He expressed his gratitude to those who had created memes about him by saying, I am very grateful to each and every person who takes the bother to develop a meme about me. On the news show Hoy, perhaps they find them insulting. Nevertheless, I heartily disagree. With gratitude, I say thank you. Ms. Martinus remarked, his show lasted so long. My extended family was able to meet him, as he was a famous person during their youth, after I was born, and he became an important part of my early life. My younger brother's kid girl, who is now around 17 or 18, has fond memories of this guy from their childhood. The identical Sunday broadcast is repeated each week. Not so much because he's old, but because his show appeals to people of all ages, I think this is why there is this idea that he has been here forever.